This is Gail Jones from the State Department of Education welcoming you to a series of uh, webcasts on bullying and cyberbullying prevention education. This will be uh, promoted to you in a series in 20-minute segments. And over this series, I would like to cover the Oklahoma School Bullying Prevention Act, the Oklahoma School Security Act, the definition of bullying, characteristics of bullies, myths about bullying, how to intervene, what to say or what not to say when you do intervene, the types of victims, the importance of documentation of incidents and ideas, and how to assess how much bullying is going on even during your transportation time. And I will include resource ideas on prevention and early intervention. Feel free to stop your tape to reflect or to ask questions of your group as you walk through this webcast. First slide, and the slides will be available to you online to download if you'd like to have your own copy. First slide is what I hope you'll learn by the end of the workshop, that obviously bullying is not child's play. It's not just teasing. It's not a normal rite of passage. It is serious, and it will require intervention and multiple strategies. Bullying is against the law, and it isn't just a youth problem or a school problem, but a community problem. Bullying is learned behavior. Bullying behavior is preventable, and a positive, safe school climate with conditions for learning can change academic performance for students and staff that feel like they are working in a safe place. Bullying prevention can change a climate, promote healthy relationships, teach life skills, and ultimately enhance your community. It may also save lives. Healthy, respectful relationships with good role models and mentors can change our world. You will note on the school climate chart the different areas that feed into what makes a safe school from reducing drug abuse to building caring communities to developing uh, creative and innovative policy and teaching basic life skills such as anger management, conflict resolution, peer mediation, and of course, bullying prevention education. The quote, violence in the schools is a reflection of violence that occurs in the larger community and society also exists for our school situations. The National Network of Violence Prevention Practitioners tell us that all school violence programs should require an early start, long commitment, strong school leadership, parental involvement, community links and partnerships, be culturally sensitive and developmentally appropriate. So what is violence? Johnson Institute years ago developed a uh, definition for violence that is any mean word, look, sign, or act that hurts a person's body, feelings, or things. Therefore, this makes bullying behavior an act of violence. On this slide, what do you see? Do you see a face? Or, if you tilt your head to the right, do you see the word liar, L-I-A-R? And in the next slide, do you see an Eskimo? Do you see a profile? Both of these pictures are an example of perception. Some of us see something in one way, and some of us see something in another way. That's exactly the way it is with bullying behavior. It is not our perception of the behavior which makes it bullying or not, but it is the person on the receiving end that sees or feels rejected, humiliated, tortured, disrespected. Therefore, are you watching for the signs of a troubled youth? You will see two columns on this slide that I hope will be shared with all staff members, including parents and our support staff, of early warning signs of a youth that could be experiencing bullying behavior or a troubled or depressed youth. These signs are not meant to label a youth, but are uh, signs for or calls and cries for help. 
Did you know that children who grow up in homes for violence and present is six times more likely to die by suicide, 24 times more likely to be sexually assaulted, and even a thousand times more likely to be an abuser themselves? Thus, we say again that bullying can be learned behavior. You'll also note on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the needs of each human being for uh, physical needs, safety needs, um, needs for loving and belonging, and self-esteem and self-actualization. What happens to a student when those needs aren't being met? Chances are they're feeling hopelessness, bitterness, anger, and extreme hurt. And many without proper life skills and knowing how to express these needs often internalize them and then in a uh, uncomfortable situation some of these unexpressed hurts and needs come forth in unhealthy ways. The next slide you notice is a picture of the different areas of the brain. Brain research has now told us that the last part of the brain to be developed is the prefrontal cortex. Planning, decision making, impulsivity control, rational or critical thinking are all done in this front part of the brain. Therefore, if we see that bullying increases in middle school, and we are thinking of kids that may be 11, 12, and 13 years old, and up into high school with children that are from 12 to 17, we know that those brains are still developing and therefore need our concern, guidance, and um, instruction even uh, more so because the wiring in their brain has not finished that helps them make more critical decisions and, and think and act rationally. Youth can be coached to use problem-solving skills for bullying, and we hope to teach that to think before pressing the send key when they are using internet or their telephone. And of course, the less likely they will be to disseminate a photo or message that will cause trouble and hurt reputations. But again, with poor impulse control and not thinking long term of the outcome of something they might be saying or considering sending on is all the more reason they need our guidance and our supervision. Children who do not have adequate life skills or coping skills will use whatever means they have to deal with challenges and problems, what they've seen or heard or experienced. These might be anger management, dealing with disappointment, what's a healthy relationship look like, how do you communicate with another individual, how do you solve conflicts, how do you make decisions, and using impulse control. Many children do not have adequate life skills. Therefore, many of the research-based curriculum and materials include just these skills, which also help in other areas of high-risk behavior. You will note the iceberg theory with a picture of the iceberg, where the second thing that we feel is usually anger. That's what sticks up above the waves. But underneath the surface, the largest part of the iceberg are the primary things we feel. Frustration, hurt, fear, embarrassment, insecurity, depression, rejection. Many times we focus on what we see above the surface, but we don't attend to the needs and feelings below the surface. Many of these feelings could be some of the basis for angry outbursts, inappropriate behaviors, and um, harmful behaviors. You'll see in the next slide, if you choose to stop, there's a group discussion assignment for you and your staff to use to define bullying behavior, the types of things you think bullies do, why you think students engage in this behavior, what happens to students that are being bullied, what role do bystanders play, and how do these incidents affect your whole school. In the next slide, we'll give the definition for bullying. 
due to much research, bullying is repeated and uncalled for aggressive behavior, often unprovoked meanness. It is behavior that's designed to threaten, frighten, or to get someone to do something they would not normally do. Bullying is usually directed by a stronger student against a weaker student, meaning an imbalance of power exists. One of the critical facts you'll find in most literature about bullying is that bullies identified by age 8 are six times more likely than non-bullies to be convicted of a crime by age 24 and five times more likely to end up with a serious criminal record by age 30. So some people feel that this is just kids being kids, or this is just their age group, or this is normal behavior. On this slide, I'd like you to look at the left column that's labeled normal peer conflict, and the right side, which is labeled bullying behavior. If you'll notice in looking at both columns, there is a difference between normal peer conflict and bullying behavior. It's also important to note with our students that there is a difference between what we might call tattling or telling and reporting. In this slide, you'll see on the left side examples or reasons for tattling, and on the right side, the in reasons for reporting or responding. There are several types of bullying behavior. It could be physical, social, verbal, sexual, and now electronic, or what some call cyberbullying. Remember, bullying is learned behavior. There are several myths surrounding bullying also. Some of the myths are only boys bully, or once a bully, always a bully. If bullying behavior is learned, it can be unlearned. Many feel bullies have low self-esteem. It's actually been proven that their power and control over another human being gives them a sense of great pride. It has also been known as a myth that bullies come from low-income families. Actually, we see bullying behavior at all socioeconomic levels. Bullying does not always use physical aggression. It can be called indirect bullying, and it involves behind the scenes without supervision, perhaps, and um, gossiping and other kinds of actions which do not require physical acts. Another myth is students that are um, uh, low academically performing students. Bullying has been seen at all levels of uh, academic performance. Bullying does not have to be agitated or aggressive acts, and most bullying happens at school, not away from school. Many have been told to fight back to handle the bullying problem. In doing so, you're sending three messages, that the only way to deal with violence is another act of violence, that if fighting back may increase the intensity of bullying, even to the point of using a weapon, and that there is no other alternative rather to fight back. I would like to think we could teach our young people to use their brains and not their fists. But why do people bully? They may want to hurt others intentionally. They want to make fun of people who are different from them. It gives them a sense of power and control. Or they might be trying to move attention away from themselves while they're doing something else. Some find bullying very entertaining. Or they're seeking some type of status in their social strata. The next slide shows you different ways of how people bully. Some of the most common, obviously, are name-calling, embarrassing someone, shoving or hitting or pinching, leaving someone out, starting rumors, uh, graffiti with people's names on it, uh, and now cyberbullying. Some signs of bullied youth, especially to be noted with your parents, is your child may be returning from school with damaged or missing clothing, books, or belongings, they may have unexplained cuts or bruises or scratches. They may be loners and not have friends to hang out with or don't talk about friends at school that they are with. They appear afraid of going to school or refuse to go to school. 
They've lost interest in their homework or schoolwork. They may even complain of physical ailments such as headaches or stomach aches. Some may have nightmares or difficulty sleeping. They may appear depressed or moody and isolate themselves. Some may show anxiety or um, poor self-esteem. Some children might be more quiet and passive, or some may be more nervous and combative. And what are the characteristics of bullies? Usually bullies have a significant role model in their life, sometimes forceful or hostile parent discipline. Characteristics of a bully is someone that enjoys being in charge or in control. They believe that victims deserve hurt. They feel no guilt. Usually average students. They're usually not loners. They have a small network of friends. They may be successful at hiding their behavior from adults. They may even be excited by a victim's reaction of fear, crying, or trying to fight back. They're very successful intimidators. But bullies uh, have problems also. They may blame others for the problems they cause. They may not feel popular. They may have a lack of self-awareness. They have a greater likelihood of dropping out of school and a greater likelihood of involvement with the legal system due to vandalism, fighting, theft, drunkenness, truancy. They may have a sense of inadequacy, feeling like they do not belong or are not loved. They may see hostile intent when there is none. What do passive victims feel? They may show a lot of emotions. They rarely tell about being bullied. Some carry weapons for protection. They may be sensitive or cry easily or they're easy targets. They may be shy and lack social skills. Some are usually insecure and they lack self-esteem. These children may be chosen last or left out of groups or parties or get-togethers. They may even appear to lack a sense of humor. They often have few or no friends. They may be anxious or get easily upset. Some may even use money or toys as bribes for protection. Then there's the provocative victim. They may be pests and repeatedly irritate others. They're quick-tempered and prone to fight back. They like to get others charged up. They may provoke bullying or egg the kids on. They may look back and laugh. And they may look as if they're bullies themselves. Problems uh, that are common to targets may be clinical depression, suicidal thoughts, abnormal fear or worry that's getting in the way of their normal functioning, poor appetite, profound rage, academic problems, even when they used to enjoy school. They may have a sense of shame or feeling like a weakling or may turn to substance abuse. This is the end of the first segment of our bullying, and I hope you'll join me for the next segment when we talk about cyberbullying.